These therapies are for women who have a lot of period pains, endometriosis like I do, PCOS, PCOD, pelvic pain, abdominal pain, um, a lot of constipation, bloating or a lot of back pain and more. Hi guys, I'm Shivani Trehan and welcome back to my channel Social Cravings. So in this video, I will take you for one of my physiotherapy sessions. I will also make you meet my physiotherapist and my chiropractitioner and they will demonstrate all the therapies on me and how those therapies have ultimately helped me with my own pelvic pain, period pain, all the pain that comes along with endometriosis, especially due to adhesions caused by cysts and fibroids. So in this video, the therapist will explain which all therapies they do on me, why they do those therapies and how each of those therapies have helped me and they will also demonstrate those therapies on me. So you are attending one of my physiotherapy sessions in the true sense. Now when I initially started going to them, I was in a pretty bad shape and I also learned that I had a tilted pelvis which was perhaps adding to that entire pain. So when I went to them at that time, during my periods, I could not walk, I could not stand up straight, I could not breathe properly, I had no energy or no stamina left in me, I could not even lift a tray at home. And really, that's really not an exaggeration, you know, that had become a reality of my life. Anyways guys, I am a lot better today and it's really helped me and that is why I wanted to share all this information with all of you. So let's just head for the session now. Hi guys, I'm Jayachani Radhwani. I am Shivani's um, physiotherapist. So we have been helping her um, through her PCOD symptoms um, for what she had come to us. So PCOD is, as we all know that it is about the having cysts and the fibroids in the uterus or around the ovaries and the fallopian tube so it depends on uh, where you have those fibroids but because of that uh, people complain of a lot of pain uh, during the menstrual cycle irregular period cycle it can be associated with your bloating a lot of bloating and sometimes even indigestion and many people do complain of constipation as well so she came to us with all these complaints uh, with we did suggest to her that she should undergo the physiotherapy but physiotherapy is not the traditional physiotherapy that we suggested to her we wanted to deal with all these symptoms by osteopathic manipulations and the visceral manipulations and the pelvic movements in which we did teach her how to activate her pelvic floor muscles and the core muscles to stabilize the changes whatever we would get in and lastly we went for the chiropractic manipulations as well in which we decided to adjust her pelvis in a way that her our organs could breathe properly. So Shivani came to us um, with this endometriosis uh, problem where we all know that a um, lot of additions get formed where it tightens your organs to your abdominal cavity. So now the abdominal cavity has all the visceral organs which is supported by your fascia. It's a layer, it's a continuous layer of a connective tissue which supports your organ within your abdominal cavity. So in endometriosis, you form a lot of adhesions in that fascia. As a result, your organs are not able to move in a way they should move. So every, you all must be wondering why I'm saying that the organ needs to move. So every organ has its own movement, a way of, a specific way of movement which should be there. And when these additions get formed in endometriosis, it doesn't let your uterine uterus, your uterine ligaments to move in a specific way, the way they should be moving. So as a result, during your menstrual cycle, all the changes that happen in the uterus, it becomes so heavy for it that it can't move in a way that it should be. There is a tug of war between the ligaments and the organ. So as a result, you start having a lot of 
abdominal pain, the pelvic area pain. Many people do get um, the pain not just in the abdominal cavity but in the vaginal muscles as well. They start spasming down the vaginal area. You have a lot of pain down that area as well. And so because of these, it leads finally to your bloating, to uh, many people throw up because of this. So it's all because your fascia that is not moving properly. So when we deal with your endometriosis and its symptoms, we go for something called as visceral manipulation. So visceral manipulation is nothing, it's the moving the organ in its own cavity around uh, with respect to the surrounding tissue. Now you will say what is surrounding tissue, surrounding tissue is again your fascia. So we need to move that fascia right so once we get into that layer into that organ layer we start moving it we start relaxing the fascia as well now how to relax the fascia so then the second part comes as myofascial release so we go for visceral manipulation then we go for myofascial release so we start mobilizing the fascia we release the fascia so that we give breather to the organs to breathe well to move well once your organs move well your hormone system starts functioning in a better way all the hormones are starting um, they, they they are regularized in a fashion that your levels which were going haywire they start coming down and your hormone levels you will see a notice a change even in your blood repose that they all become much much better and your symptoms definitely would tend to improve because of that so uh, when we go for the myofascial release, we release your fascia in your abdominal cavity and as well as in your back muscles because they, these two cavities are related, interrelated to each other. So we have to release the abdominal cavity and the back tissues as well. Then comes your mobilizing the bone. Bone means your pelvis bone. So pelvis is a bone which uh, holds your reproductive organs which holds your uterus which holds your fallopian tubes your ovaries so now we need to mobilize that pelvic cavity now that's the part that the chiropractor plays so he helps us in mobilizing the pelvis so once he manipulates the pelvis he fix the anterior tilt so there is less pressure on the ligaments and again we have set the organ in its resting position where it should be again helping you to all the symptoms that you were having because of endometriosis so the treatment plan that um, i just mentioned um, we generally call people for this kind of treatment uh, say around twice in a week initially so initially everybody asked me like um, how often should they come or for how many months does it take so how often I answered it before that twice in a week definitely and for how many months it's generally three to six months that it takes which Shivani would like to confirm it as well that it did take her that long uh, period of time to come to get the situation under control basically and then after that uh, we started seeing her once in a week for um, another two months then once in ten days but you would have to maintain at least once in two weeks so that we can you know it's it's like a maintenance therapy and plus we give you a lot of exercises to stabilize all the changes that we have brought in so we give a lot of pelvic floor exercises we give a lot of pelvic clock exercises where we know that the pelvis should be maintained in a posterior till so i'll explain you what's posterior till so that the organs can be at a resting position we give you a lot of core strengthening exercises but in a way where we know that it needs to be activated in a certain way with your breathing so it's not just the general core exercises that everybody lands up doing it so it's not that so it's a technique based a very very technique based uh, which you really need to keep practicing over the period of time so you need to follow that set pattern of uh, core strengthening exercises but that core exercises should not be stopped you have to keep doing them forever take it like that because uh, these are these are the exercises that helps you to stabilize the whole situation plus as i said maybe once in a month or once in three weeks keep getting your chiropractic manipulations done and your myofascial releases follow them regularly because if you leave them 
so then the adhesion starts reforming sometimes sometimes not always so it's better that we do continue with those myofascial releases and the visceral manipulation for a prolonged period of time till the time we know that your symptoms have been completely off and your hormonal levels have come under control so I'm going to show you the visceral manipulation for the uterus and the uterine ligament, the broad ligament that we have. So for that we mobilize the uterus ligament right around this area to loosen up the tissue that's holding it tight and doesn't, you know, obstructs the blood supply to the organ. So we kind of work around the whole of the uterine ligament and the uterus. So all these techniques do help for the constipation, the abdominal bloatings and the acidity issues as well. So for that we mobilize the intestines properly so that all the motility of the intestine also improves. But right now we are doing it more for her, the uterine ligaments. And when it comes to the uterus, so we do check the motility of the uterus where we kind of bend and And we check where is the position of the uterus and how is it behaving. Then we release the whole of the abdominal fascia. So people generally call it like an abdominal massage, but um, so you can by yourself you can just move the abdominal in circles so that's your abdominal massage but what we are doing here is to break those adhesions that have formed so we release the whole of the abdominal fascia so it would be slight painful where the restriction would be more so that's going to be a bit more painful slightly because since you are going deep to the organ level, so yes, it does affect that. So we have loosened up all the abdominal fascia, the linea alba, rectus abdominis, obliques. So we have worked around those fascia. Second most important muscle where we work on is the psoas muscle. So psoas muscle is the muscle that presses into all the abdominal organs. It, um, it's, it's a muscle right on top of those organs. So if that psoas muscle is tight, so it constricts the blood supply to the uterus and doesn't let it move properly. So we work on the psoas muscle. So psoas muscle is a very deep layered muscle. So you have to really go deep inside the abdominal cavity into it and we stay there for some time. It, it's, it is painful and a little bit of uncomfortable for the person that we are working on so Shivani is already feeling some discomfort but once it releases it it really works to release your periods pain and uh, the pain during a menstrual cycle so swas has like two parts swas major and minor so we're going to release both the fibers for them and then we would release the muscle that's iliacus which is holding the pelvic floor strongly it's very near to the pelvis. So that's the iliacus. So I'm going to approach the iliacus from the opposite direction. So I will ask Shivani to straighten her legs. Because her additions are more towards the left. So I will work more into the left iliacus. Right over there. So we're going to hold that muscle till the time muscle gives way and eases out the pressure. And even she could feel that the muscle kind of softens up in the hand, the pain reduces, it feels much more opened up. And I would ask her to take a deep breath in and then I let go of the muscle. Like that. Then we generally work on the pelvic piriformis muscle as well, which works a lot on the pelvic stability so if the muscle is here so if this piriformis is tight so it rotates the pelvis outward like that so because she's already released because we have been working on her so it's much better for her so otherwise if this muscle is tight so pelvis starts rotating outward so if your pelvis will rotate outward so it already pushes the organ 
it wants to pull the organ more out so that's the reason why we have to work on your piriformis muscle as well to release the pelvis cavity basically so we bend the knees and then we work on that muscle to be released that's the reason why i mentioned that we have to release the abdominal cavity as well as the back muscles so they work hand in hand this will be uncomfortable for the patients but it gives very good results so we stay there for some time and again slowly will come off from there and the last muscle that will be they will be working on her QL because QL attaches her pelvis to the last rib so if this muscle will be tight for her again this shifts the pelvis and any shifting in the pelvis is not very conducive for us and for her symptoms so we are going to release that QL muscle as well So we will stay there, stay there, stay there, go deeper, once we find the release and then we ask her to take a deep breath in and we come out. So this was about the whistle manipulation and the myofascial release. So we did both the components on her and we have been doing that for quite a bit of time. As a result, her pelvis is much more stable. Her leg length is much better. So we generally check the leg length as well. So lie down, Shimani is great. So when she came to us, her pelvis was not aligned. So which meant that she was like this, something like this. So we had to get her back into the line. So we checked her, both the bones, whether they were like one up and one down. So this, you can do it by yourself as well. So these are the two pointed bones. So take them like in headlights and these two headlights have to always point straight in the same line. They should not be like this. If any headlight is off, so that means that the pelvis is under constriction. It's not relaxed. It's holding your organs very tight. So you have to set the pelvis in its straight line. Oh. 
down. Now jump to today. Today my pelvic is in position and I go only once a month for maintenance sessions. So wasn't that so informative and insightful? I'm very grateful to both of them for taking out time and doing this for all of us. Most of my pain has gone today, almost 80 to 90% of it. And if you like, you can actually go back to my video where I spoke about natural remedies for endometriosis and see the other remedies that I've mentioned for reducing period pain or pain with endometriosis. So my therapist, Soma Tso, have also told me about my posture. So for example, they've told me not to sit cross-legged for too long. They have also given me pelvic flow exercises, core strengthening exercises and hip flexibility exercises, which I can easily do at home for the rest of the month. And yes, I religiously do them. I hope this video was helpful. If you know any woman who has any of these health conditions or just period pains, do share this video with them. It might just help them. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and wait for me to share some more videos with all of you. Until then, lots of love.